Welcome to Point of View. I'm Pastor Josh Barnes. This is Justin Barnes. This is the show where the points are made up and the, they don't matter. Wait. No, I'm sorry. That was a, that was a, whose line is that anyway? Uh, this is the show where we're unashamed to be <laughs> biblical about political, cultural, social, and even theological issues. And uh, everything is made up and the points don't matter. That's the, that's the way that whose line is anyway always started. Uh, anyway, we are, uh, we're biblical about things. We do that because you can't be right about things if you disagree with the Bible. We know that because Jesus died on the cross, rose from the dead, and he said the Bible's true. That proves that he's telling the truth. And if the Bible's true, we can't be right about issues if we disagree with it. That, all that is was said in one minute, Justin. What do you think about that? I think that I regret caving in and letting you force me make this last episode because that was the worst way you've started a show yet <laughs> that was pretty bad guys i'm not sure what ep what um order we're going to air air these episodes but this is the last one we recorded in a long day of episode recording and so um justin thank you for being a trooper and and hanging out and, and helping me if it was just me by myself recording an episode at this hour i probably would sound like a lunatic um, together, we'll sound like two lunatics, which is, I guess, better. We're gonna, we're going to talk today about something we hinted at in our last recording. I'm not sure if that'll air tomorrow or or today, actually, uh, or to, or yesterday. It won't air today. Um, but uh, whatever you see, Amir, in the last one we recorded, we talked a little bit at the end of it about the the, the question, "What is a woman?" and and Matt Walsh is making headlines, waves asking this question to people around the world, what is a woman? And this being the last week of March, which I didn't even realize until last week that this is actually Women's his History Month. So in, in honor of, of women all around the world, by the way, I want to honor women to an equal standing as I honor men. And I never honor men. So <laughs> I don't really honor women, um, but uh, I actually, I do, I try to give a little more respect even to women, uh, opening doors for them every now and then when I'm on a date with my wife, not with the other people I, I go on dates with. Um, this is, this is already bad. Can we start this again? We should, we should just start this again. All right. This has gotten We're, so uh, much worse. It's <laughs> just terrible. Um, all right. What, I, what, what just happened? Okay. So right, what you're seeing right here on your screen is uh is leah thomas leah thomas is the uh is a suppose supposedly a man um supposedly but alas um she has has decided that she is a she um biologically he's a man but he's playing as a woman in women sports now, this is, of course, the, the thing that everyone's familiar with. Leah Thomas, and uh, you can see in this picture here, the actual women involved are, uh, <laughs> I mean, they're over to the side. You can see in the picture, but th there's Leah. That's what he calls himself now. Um, that That's a dude. That, that right there, that is a dude. That is not a, a female. That is a male. And, uh, but here's the question. Um, the fact that he's a male doesn't matter. He gets to play in a woman's sport because, you know, male and female does not equal woman and man. Um, this is nonsense. This is complete nonsense. And it's nonsense that has now made its way to the highest court in the land as uh, the recent Supreme Court nominee has also uh, weighed in on this. Justin, I'm about to play this uh, a clip from the Supreme Court nominee. Um, biblically speaking, this is complete nonsense. We don't really need to go to the Bible to say that it's nonsense to say that a woman is not is is anything other than an adult female. But um, but we can also support this in the Scripture. Um, your your introduction thoughts on this topic. Introduction thoughts on this topic is that there are a, a mountain of great arguments that conservatives are using right now, primarily, what is a woman? Um, when, th when that simple of a question buries your entire ideology and you melt it before it, it shows just how vacuous and empty your ideology is. However, 
I don't think that we're fighting with the full weight of the arguments that we need to use because there is more to it than what we've been arguing so far. And I'll maybe touch on what I'm talking about here in a little bit. Okay, so let's get to I'm going to I'm going to play this clip. We have lots of lots of different specific things. Um, Leah Thomas, Amy Schumer, um, all of these names of men who, who have chosen female names for themselves to call themselves women. Um, we're going to talk about some some more specifics here, depending on um, how much time we have. But let me play this clip. This is um, a a woman talking to a woman. I can tell because they look like women. They sound like women and they are actually female. So I can tell that they're women. Uh, Marsha Blackburn, um, and she is uh, uh, in uh, speaking to um, Brown Jackson. I, I always have a hard time with with her first name. Is it could could. Kintanji? Katanji. Katanji. Brown ja Jackson, who's the nominee for the Supreme Court. It looks like she's going to become the next Supreme Court justice. Here is their interaction on the definition of the word woman. Writing for the majority, Justice Ginsburg stated, supposed inherent differences are no longer accepted as a ground for race or national origin classifications. Physical differences between men and women, however, are enduring. The two sexes are not fungible. A community made up exclusively of one sex is different from a community composed of both. Do you agree with Justice Ginsburg that there are physical differences between men and women that are enduring? Um, Senator, respectfully, I I'm not familiar with that particular quote or case, okay. so it's hard for me to okay, comment but, as to whether. All or right, not. I'd love to get your your opinion on on that, and you can submit that. Do you interpret Justice Ginsburg's meaning of men and women as male and female? Again, because I don't know the case, I don't know how I interpret it. I need to read the whole okay. thing. Okay. Uh, can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N not in okay. this context. So I'm you not a biologist. The meaning of the word woman is so unclear and controversial that you can't give me a definition? So uh, she confirms, no, I, I won't give you a definition for the, for the, for the meaning of the word woman i mean the the when when you you've you've seen the memes you've seen people say well that she was asked what is a woman and she she said no i'm not a biologist when you actually watch the clip here it is a, a whole range of emotions come to mind i i'm i'm disgusted i'm 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 appalled i'm 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 completely baffled because this is supposed to be the the black woman that biden promised to put in the Supreme Court. But she says, I don't know what a woman is. I can't even tell you what a woman is because I'm not a biologist. I, I haven't studied this case. I can't tell you whether a woman is actually um, uh, different from a man. I can't tell you that. What? <laughs> what the heck? If you can't tell us what is a woman, then why should you be put into the Supreme? Like, it's, it's as if Marsha Blackbird asked, can you tell us what two plus two is? And she says, no, I'm, I'm not a mathematician. I, I can't do that. I'm not going to answer that question. This is nonsense. That's my word. Nonsense. Justin, what do you think? I think that this is a clear, uh, actually just yesterday, uh, I'm teaching through um, in the adult class that I teach at our church, I'm teaching through God's law. And currently I'm in the Holiness Code, which is in Leviticus chapter, depending on where you peg it, it's usually 17. Some people have it to the end of the book. And one of the things I touched on is Leviticus chapter 19. In verse 15, it says, Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. And one of the things you're going to see as a consistent theme in the Old Testament is that righteous judges are a blessing on a nation that they are a gift from God, that they are a wonderful blessing for uh, God's people. However, on the flip side, unrighteous judges, 
and judges who have perverted righteousness and will uh, judge unrighteously are a curse on a nation. Um, and I can't help as as I see this woman who's who's being vetted and and because Democrats have the court uh, or have the have the Senate in the House probably going to be confirmed. She is going to be in the highest court of our land. What a statement that makes about our people, about the the judges that we have over us. When the wicked are in power, the people are are the people mourn, and it's it's interesting to me. Um, and by the way, there's a lot of political implications in that verse as well as about not respecting the poor or respecting people based on status one way or the other, but we don't have time to go there perhaps. But it's interesting to me that, that what God said is a clear sign of a, of a curse and God's judgment on the land we are seeing, because you're right, obviously a, a woman who was pegged for the position because she fit one of the two qualifications which was black and woman cannot define what woman means i bet you she could tell you what black means but anyway um i've, I've been monologuing so I'll let no you you're absolutely you right 100 uh, percent. and when ted cruz i wish i had the clip ready to play when ted cruz pressed her on this question um later on i think it was the the next day he came back and he said, listen, there are statutes that you're that are going to come before the court that require you to know what's the difference between a man and a woman. There's going to be statutes that apply only to women or only to men. If you don't know the difference between a man and a woman, this is a problem. How can you interpret these statutes? And he says, so explain to me how, you know, what, what's your answer to this? And she says, well, listen, um, uh, I want to clarify. I know that I am a woman. And I know that that uh, certain people are women, but I, I'm not going to try to qualify what what constitutes a woman. And this is just even more that's nonsense upon nonsense. That's what that is. That's saying that I know I'm a woman, but I don't know what woman is. So I know I'm a nothing because woman is nothing. It means nothing. It's it's a word that used to mean human adult adult human female. And now it means whatever you want it to mean, which means it means nothing specifically, which means when you say I'm a woman, you're saying you're nothing. You are, you're, you're taking all the value, all the wonder out of being a woman and saying nothing. You are now nothing. This is yeah, not only sad for, 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 for females and for women, but it also undermines the whole point about her being the first woman because she's now robbing women of any meaning or any of any value. Yeah, and it, and it makes women's rights, that statement, hollow. It makes all of that sort of stuff very hollow. But here's here's where I think maybe it's a good good time to sort of say what I think is the whole in how we're pushing back against this as conservatives in general. And I think we've discussed this briefly on, on our show before, but the problem is we're pushing back in large part saying, no, woman is a thing. There is such a thing as woman. And then we're stopping there. The problem is, if you want to push back with the whole truth of God, which as Christians is what we ought to be looking to push back with, is not just uh, what wisdom we can get the whole world to agree on, but hey, this is what God says, is that this is what a woman is, that there is such a thing as a woman, that God has created her beautifully, and for a purpose. And that's what our culture is not is 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 allergic to say and by the way i would say that this i don't know if this is where we want to take this conversation but to broaden it out to a lot of the ways mainstream conservatism fights against a lot of woke stuff um it always stops short of going as far as we need to go to to hit the nail on the head because what's hitting the nail on the head yes uh that man swimming in that pool is a man who is charged with certain things by God that he is to fulfill. The women who who are you know pretending to be men like uh, Ellen Elliot Page I forget but but it's a girl who's pretending to be a guy. She has she has been charged by God with a certain role she is to fulfill. Not to say all women, as we discussed in another episode this week, not to say all women are just, you know, supposed to be barefoot, barefoot and pregnant all the time in the kitchen, but there is a role God has assigned them. 
And when we push against it and just say, no, there is such a thing as woman, and we don't define what God has said is good and wonderful and beautiful and distinct about that, we miss the boat. And it's the same thing where um, I, I don't know if you listen to the, the podcast that Ted Cruz has. He has It's called Verdict with Ted Cruz. I listen to it every now and then. And he's made the point recently that, look, I'm not for um, outlawing homosexuality. Because, you know, uh, men and women are different and, you know, marriage is this thing. But, but, but gay marriage, they're not hurting each other. It's what two people do in their own bedroom. Conservatism is allergic to going far enough to actually push back effectively against this. So while I agree, what is a woman, Katanji Brown uh, Jackson needs to be able to answer that, to, to have the basic qualifications to be on any court or any judgment at all. I think this is where we see the deficiencies in conservatism to be willing to go far enough and say, no, there's more to it than that, which is why I say conservatism needs an anchor. But yeah. So this is where I'm going to say, <clears throat> I'm going to, I'm going to kind of jump on what, one of the things you said about, about the role that God has given us. God made men a little bit, a little bit stronger, right? Um, for me, a little bit, for most men, a lot <laughs> stronger than women. Um, <laughs> like, um, he, he kind of ran out of testosterone when it came to you, I guess. <laughs> that's right. God made men a little bit stronger. He, he made men um, a little bit, um, you know, a little bit uh, more advanced in certain areas, especially more in the in the physical strength category, right? More aggressive. And, and he made women... Um, in in other ways, better in in other ways. It, in in many cases, it is women who who are more intelligent than men. Not always. That's not a general rule. But that's uh, that's many cases I I is the case. Um, although um, they they tend to use their intelligence and apply it in different ways. Um, women are definitely better at being sensitive, emotional, aware of their surroundings, like aware of the of the of the deeper things going on in in conversations and things around them. They're very well at, at good at breaking things down like that. And uh, and women uh, are way better than us at giving birth to children. Like there's there's several different things that women in general are just better at and the same thing men in general are better so we're going to do our role right as men and we're going to stand up and defend women that's one one of the reasons why god gave men additional strength is so that they can defend women and that's why why women are given additional emotions to help beat through our heads that we need to be more sensitive sometimes right but we're going to stand up and do our role and defend women right here right now on point of view and here's the thing these guys pretending to be women and stealing the woman of the award, uh, 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 woman of the year award, um, that's that's wrong. That now I don't really care about the woman of the year award until it is given to a man. Now I care about it. This is quote unquote Rachel Levin, who is a man who just dresses Levine. like a woman. What's that? Rachel Levine, not Levin. No, oh, Levine. It's Mark Levin. Rachel Levine. Mark, Mark Levin, right? Rachel Levine. Okay. Um, anyway, this this right here. You're you're if you're watching on on uh, on television, not listening on the radio, you're looking at a picture here of Rachel Levine, who is a man dressed as a woman, who just makes a habit, a, a lifestyle out of dressing like a woman, calling himself a woman, and he won Woman of the Year by pretending to be a woman. And this is supposed to be a wonderful thing. That people can pretend to be women and uh, beat women out of the best women of in the world spots. You know, the, the, the greatest achievements, uh, according to our society, that women can do. Now men are, t are stealing from women and doing better than women. This is not okay. Now, if I was, if I was not following my role and I was more interested in, in the achievements of men, I'd say men are even achieving <laughs> the great awards that women... The greatest uh, men are even better at being women than women are, but but I'm not. I'm here to defend women. This uh, this man who won the women's trophy for swimming, uh, that's uh, that's not okay. That's not okay. That that men are are stealing the the spotlight from women. This man who calls himself Amy Schumer, who is a Jeopardy champ, um, Schneider. 
Okay, Schneider, whatever. I'm, it's not a, it's not his real name anyway. Well, Schneider probably is. Anyway, the point is that these people on in Women's History Month, no less, are men pretending to be women, winning women's events and women's trophies. Well, Jeopardy isn't necessarily a women's event, but you understand what I'm saying. Um, I think as men, if we care about women, if you truly are a feminist, if you truly, by the way, what, what, what in the world is an LGBT activist doing when men aren't, men, the word man doesn't mean anything, the word woman doesn't mean anything, what in the world is gay anymore? You, oh, it's two men? What's, what is a man? Oh, it's two women? What, what's a woman? None of this makes any sense. The foundation, the rug has been pulled out from under all of the letters, LGBTQ, all of them mean nothing now that there's no such definition. There's no definition for the word woman. Yeah, and I mean, as nonsensical as the whole LGBT thing has been for a long time, you're right that the T undercuts the L, G, the L, the G, and the B. And not only that, but there's a reason why there's people like, uh, very much liberal people like the, uh, the J.K. Rowling, who is the author of the, the Harry Potter series. And she's having to push back as a what's called a TERF, a trans exclusion, exclusionary radical feminist against transgenderism as a as a very left person, because they even understand that if this is if, if a trans woman is a woman, then everything that they fought about how womanhood isn't about these stereotypes of wearing makeup and a dress and, and doing these feminine type things. Well, except for now, transgenderism is basically saying that is the sum of what it means to be a woman. Because if a man puts on a dress and wears makeup, you have to call him she now. So it's, it's getting so absurd that even last generation's extreme liberals is starting to say, okay, this is a bit much. But... The problem is it's always this is how it always starts is these small groups that are a vocal minority always end up dominating the culture if there's no pushback and um we can't be silent on it there's there's no there's no way that we can say this isn't the hill to die on yeah let's talk about that let's talk about in the last few minutes here let's talk about why right what are the big reasons why this can't be let to, to go the way of, of the gay agenda and Obergefell? We, we cannot let this go that direction the way we've let other things slide, which, I, which we also shouldn't have let slide. Um, why is it so important? I would say first, number one, it's just an attack on truth. The idea that's, that a word can no longer can just be divorced from its meaning and just made to mean absolutely nothing and then applied randomly. And then that somehow, somehow we now associate males as being females because they call themselves women, even though they're, they're males. This is just complete nonsense. And it's an attack on the whole concept of of truth. Truth now becomes relative, whatever you want. We're just going to act like it's actually true, even if it's not true. And now you can just make your own reality. This is, this is, this undermines the gospel because the gospel is based on truth. This I think is the essential reason, but there are so many more. Do you want to throw in another one? Uh, to me, the biggest one is, yes, it's, there's truth, but the fact of the matter is that this is waging a war against the Lordship of Christ. That is the fundamental thing we are finding at the bottom because the reason people kick against truth is because God is in in his nature. He is truth. Um, the point is this is kicking against God's right as creator to define his creation. This is kicking against, for example, Genesis 1 26 and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. God assigned you what your sex is. You don't have the right to say, I, I have the wrong body or that God made any sort of mistake. This is an assault on God's lordship. 
at the very core of this this is a war of rejection of this is this is the playing out of romans one where you have the suppressing of the knowledge of god the holding it down fighting against it and turning to every other thing that is an imag is is imaginable and the bible actually says something very interesting there it says that they know god's righteous judgments that those which do such things are worthy of death but rather instead of instead of acknowledging god as the creator and worshiping him as creator instead they they not only do these things but also give hearty approval to those that do it i don't have the, the exact terminology but it's the idea is that they're encouraging each other to all this wickedness because wickedness wants this party so that everybody's in the same boat this is exactly what we're seeing playing out in our culture and it is fundamentally this is this is why i say conservatism for all of the good things that it does it has to get back to having it biblically grounded because what is the foundation here it is not culture is going against biology and science and things like that it is a war on the lordship of christ period yeah. that is at the base here and until we address that we will not address this problem mm -hmm. yeah no that's definitely going to be a higher a higher on the list than the than the other things. I have a couple other things to throw out there, and there are more repercussions. What happens as some of the things that happens as a result? They're definitely lower on the list. You're at you hit the nail on the head. That's the big one. But look, when we when we have this assault on on the lordship of Christ, we also have now removed purpose from existence. Like you might say. Oh, I'm not an atheist. I believe that there's 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 purpose and meaning, but now you're actually erasing like the fundamental purpose that God created men and women, right? It, there's a fundamental grounding that men are created for a certain kind of purpose and women are created for a certain kind of purpose to complement one another and to together work together to accomplish God's purpose in the world, right? And you've now erased that. You, you, by, by denying the lordship of Christ, you've also now, because you're purposeless and because you're godless, you're going to end up going down a road where you're denying your own self, the whole mantra of be yourself and all that kind of stuff, completely gone. You now hate yourself and you're trying to turn yourself into something that you are in fact not in order to think that if you can create some sort of new reality about yourself, you're going to then be happy with yourself. And all you're doing is hating yourself even more and hating God for who you, he created you to be. This is a, a pattern of self-destruction that leads as we mentioned, I think, Justin, the, the statistic is about 50% suicide rate. Is, is, that, is that the statistic I, I heard? it's closer to 40, but it's, it's around that area. It's an incredibly high number, and we're, we're, we're almost out of time. We've got to wrap this up. But my goodness, this is, you're absolutely right, the hill to die on. This is the hill to die on. Guys, don't surrender this issue. Don't back down. Someone says, I'm a woman, but they're a man. Ask them. What is a woman? And then let them show their inconsist inconsistency. That's all the time we got for today. We'll see you next time on Point of View.